Hi, welcome to Pop Pop's Workshop. Today I'm making this law enforcement flag for the Sheriff's Department as a donation. They're going to be raffling this flag off and I wanted to be able to make it for them. Now that I'm using some different techniques to be able to make this flag as well as some of my old tried and true methods. And I'm also testing out the stars for the Union because this is a free download that I have put on the Inventable Project page for you to be able to make your own stars for your flag. So let's get started. For the flag that I'm making today, instead of using the 2x4s and ripping it down, I'm using a 1x12 that was 10 feet long. And this is going to give me the necessary material to put this flag together. And I'm starting out by roughly cutting this 37 inches long and then ripping my stripes down to 1.5 inches wide. This last stripe that I cut worked out perfect. All I had to do was just cut just a very, very thin strip off and virtually have no waste. Can't beat that. So this actually worked out real well. Now, after this, I took all of the stripes over to the uh, miter saw, and I had the stop set up at the 37 inches. And this is where I'm gonna cut the final length for all of my stripes. Now I take the union, which is 13 inches by 10 and a half, and I set that down here at my 37 inch point. That way there's no measuring, and I don't have to worry about having to allow for the blade width. This will cut it so the overall length is the 37 inches. As I have shown in many different videos, if I can use a simple method to be able to get the accuracy that I need and not use a tape measure, I'll do that every single time. So the flag itself now is all cut out. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is take the different stripes and I'm going to paint them. This is going to be a law enforcement flag. So these stripes are going to be black and this field for the union is going to be black. One of the things that I would like to do, I don't want the knots at the bottom. So I think I'm going to put this one at the bottom. And this wood really had very few knots. So that looks good. So as far as the ones that I'm going to paint, we'll just pull out every other one. This one is going to be the blue. I'm going to leave that one in there for the moment. That will come back into this position. Now these numbers, I'm going to have to sand that off. So there we have all of them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Those typically would be the white ones. This, of course, is going to be blue. To be able to get the black color, I'm using the acrylic jet black paint. Now, typically, on the flags that I have done in the past, I have used a um, black ebony stain, and I've had limited success with it. So today, I am going to experiment using this jet black acrylic stain. I think it's going to work real well. We'll take a look at the results at the end and see what you think. One thing for sure, it's a lot easier to be able to apply this acrylic paint than it was to stain. So this part at least is much, much easier to do. I'm doing the stripes the same way. I'm literally just pouring the paint out, spreading it around with the foam brush, and that's it can't get much easier than this. Now as far as the blue stripe, 
I'm using my Minwax wood stain, and this is the water-based True Blue, and this is the same stain that I have used for all of the different flags, and it does work real well. To apply the stain, I am using the foam brush again. This is the easiest way to be able to apply an even coat, and it makes it where it's a very dark blue, and that's what I'm looking for. If I applied it with a rag, or with a paper towel, it really looks washed out, and that's not the look that I want. So using the foam brush and putting the stain on, that's definitely the way to go. And as you know, I'm always looking for easier ways to be able to do things. Now that the painting and the staining is complete, I went ahead and torched the other stripes. Now these are the white stripes that I'm going to be torching, and because the uh, other stripes are black there's no need to torch them so this is the same process that I've used in the past I just slowly go from one end of the stripe to the other and try to have a nice slow consistent movement to get an even burnt charred look on the flags if you stop and start you're gonna get blotches and I really don't want that so this is the process that I've used and have been very successful with this uh, process since I started making the flags, oh, quite some time ago. This is the field for the stars that I'm using. Now this is the same exact uh, program that I've shared on the Inventables project page. And I wanna be able to show you that it does work perfectly because I use the exact same thing. Now I'm putting a link down in the description so that you can download this for free and use this uh, program. But it does work perfect. Now I do believe in using the center point and I have an X right there in the dead center of my uh, union that I'm going to be making my X, Y, zero point. From there, I'm just going to move the router right over to that position and that is going to be the home position to be able to carve the stars. Now move the router bit down very close to the work surface so that you can see that I do have it positioned at the dead center point. Now I want to make sure the router is set for one and we'll turn it on and get started carving. This black does look really really good. And when you cut out the stars into this union, it actually really makes the stars pop. I like this using the acrylic paint. I think it is a very uh, definite advantage over using the stain that I have used in the past. I want you to take a good close-up look at the stars and show that it's a very sharp point and it goes right down to the dead center of the star to a point. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, I know people have had some difficulties in the past, but you have to look at the setup. This is the program, how it works. I know some other people have commented that the stars were not consistent in size, and I wanted to be able to look very closely at this uh, union and these individual stars. And I actually took and measured them, and they are exactly the same. So you've got to look at your setup to be able to see what could be causing the different sizes in your uh, stars. And typically, it's going to be that the board may be just a little bit off of level. The flag now is completely done, and I think it looks amazing. Only thing I need to do now is go ahead and take it over to the assembly table and put it together. I have the flag in my jig now, and I've got it all clamped down. And I'm using a staple. This is a 18 gauge, one inch staple that I'm using to put down these uh, boards. Now these boards are glued into place and I staple them twice through each of the stripes so that it holds very, very strong. Now some people have made a comment that their flags are not coming out where the stripes are actually flush. Well, one of the things that I do is when I put the flag in and I start to assemble it, and I assemble it slow and tighten the clamp slow, 
and I'll take a rubber hammer and just tap those stripes down to be able to make sure that they are completely flush on the face side. Now I do use plenty of glue on these strips and I use plenty of staples. Now on my clamps and this jig, I have exactly the position that they need to go in. It's clearly marked. So again, no tape measure required. It's already done for me. It doesn't take long at all to be able to put all the staples in position. Time to be able to torch the back of the flag and I'm using the same techniques that I've used before. I do not want to have burned areas so I actually use a little bit of a circular motion for these small places and then for the larger areas I'll go ahead and just use that same consistent straight slow uh, action to be able to create the uh, burning effect that I'm looking for. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.